Hey everyone, um, it's been a while since I've updated the channel, but today I decided to uh, upload a new video today. This is going to be a, I just want to give you a quick update on stuff that's been going on, and what I'm going to do for the channel, and what I'm going to be doing today, obviously. Um, this is probably one of my most, um, I don't know, videos I've ever wanted to make. Um, this is a me going, this is basically a whole walkthrough of uh, me capturing a, a celestial object in the sky with my setup here. Um, and I, I'm working to, you know, trying to convert the channel, channel over to more of a astro channel, astrophotography channel. Um, it just takes a lot of effort to make these videos and I'm just, sometimes I just don't feel like doing it. But today I really felt like it, so I figured I would. Um, so anyway, I'm going to give you an update on what's been going on here. So um, it's been a couple years since I've uploaded a video about like astrophotography and stuff. So um, I decided I would do it again. Um, a lot has changed ever since that. So um, I'm going to give you a walkthrough of my new setup here and um, show you how it works and basically, uh, basically take you through a whole night of just imaging stuff and setting stuff up and just give you experience of what it's like. The pandemic has really, really taken a toll and um, I'm home now obviously so there's my school closed and all that stuff so I mean it gives me opportunity to do this type of stuff, astro and all that and I just thought it would be a good time to do it since it's going to be, be clear tonight till around like 5 a.m. or something. Um, it's going to rain later tomorrow, like late tomorrow but I'm not worried about that. I'll probably tear stuff down by tomorrow morning but yeah so it's gonna be clear tonight around 18 percent coverage which is nothing pretty much um and uh it is gonna be a pretty full moon tonight i'm looking at it right now the moon's like right there um and um the galaxy i'm capturing today is called m106 it's a beautiful spiral galaxy um it should be rising right above me right over here um, uh, by tonight, and I should get a good, good at least like three to four hours on it, um, and yeah, so that's that's what that that's what's gonna happen here. Yeah, that moon's cool. Keep looking at it here. I can show you it really quick. It doesn't look like much on the camera, but it's actually decently big and bright. So. That is a little concern, actually, um, for what I'm going to be doing tonight. And because um, the moonlight does affect and wash out um, my images and stuff. Let's go ahead and uh, get started here on um, going over my setup and giving you a full walkthrough on um, my night. So, and by the way, my camera does have... Um, night vision, infrared night vision. Um, it's not the best, but it does work. So I will give it a shot tonight to see um, how good it's gonna work. Um, if it's not good, then I'll just kind of mainly record my computer screen, because that's mainly what we're gonna be focusing on is that too, because all the images will be coming down to that. So here is um, a rough start to my setup right now. Still working on setting it up, but um, I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of what I have here. I know it looks really crazy and stuff. Um, okay, so first, let's start with the mount. So this is a Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount. Um, it's one of the most common mounts for a lot of astrophotographers um, to use. Uh, it can carry up to around 36 pounds on top of it. And it is very, very accurate. Um, it is a, it's a phenomenal mount, and I recommend it um, for more of the advanced users. Um, it's very heavy, though. <laughs> like, this top part here is probably a good 30 pounds alone, and then the tripod is probably another, like, 15, 20. It's a very heavy setup. Um, and it's controlled by the SynScan controller. Um, has all the objects in it and stuff, you can see that. And then I actually mounted a power strip to one of the tripod legs so I can plug everything in easily. 
As you can see, obviously the my cords or my cable management is pretty bad. Um, right now, I don't have really a good way of managing it. Um, I don't want to get any cable snags, so I've been dealing with this for a while, and I've kind of been living with it. But I'm really want to find a way um, for this year to get a good way of managing my cables and stuff. So moving on to the scope here. Um, oh wait, first, sorry. First, this is a electronic polar scope. So basically, instead of looking through the bottom up to the polar Polaris um, to align manually, you can, this camera is an ultra sensitive sensor where you can see Polaris on your computer screen and it'll give you directions on how to polar align based on where it, where it is. Very easy and very nice to have. It's a very, I recommend getting one of these. Um, all right, so now the scope. Um, so this is a Skywatcher eSprit 100 ED and it has an aperture of f5.5. It's a hundred millimeters um, aperture opening on the top this is for the lens and it can go down um, or the the focal length is 550 millimeters. Um, so it's very very nice to have um, such a wide aperture and um, a great um, opening at the top so it collects a lot of light and um, it's got a nice focuser here as you can see you can turn it and it's very smooth and accurate um, so here I have a flattener which is right here and then there's another spacer and then this is the electronic filter wheel by ZWO it's an eight position filter wheel I currently have seven filters in here um, I have luminance, red, green, blue, um, oxygen, hydrogen, and sulfur filters, and they're all narrow band, which is what you want in this type of environment because I live in like a Bortle 7 slash 8 sky, so it's a lot of light pollution. And then this is the ZWO ASI 1600 millimeter Pro Cool. So it has a cooler on the back, as you can see. Um, very, very powerful camera. It's monochrome, so you can use a narrow band with it. And narrow band allows you to have color on it with all the filters and stuff, obviously. Attached on the side here is my guide scope. This is a ZWO 60 millimeter guide scope with a ZWO ASI 295 or 290 millimeter um, guide cam. Same thing, it's monochrome, but you don't need filters for that because all it does is guiding. So it just follows the star and it is very accurate. Um, so all the cables here, they all lead down to this box here, which is an Intel NUC computer. Um, I got it for around like, around, let's say, I don't know, like 200 bucks. Um, it's a very, very basic model. Um, Intel Celeron, four gigs of RAM, very basic, but it does the job and it's really good. Um, these antennas here connect to the Wi-Fi for my house and everything just from everything from this setup just goes right to here and what i do is i remote into it with windows remote desktop from inside and i get all the images off of it i set up a network drive for this so i can actually live stack if i wanted to on my computer in my room yeah so that is basically my setup um and uh you can i'm just gonna show you the inside of the scope here so you can see it's a nice um, APO triplet and I um, don't have any dew heaters I've been wanting to get them but for some reason they're so expensive so I've been waiting on that and I haven't really had a need for them yet so uh, let's just hope it stays that way I haven't gotten an extension cord yet so I'm gonna grab that now but um, yeah so hope you enjoyed the walk through the setup um, and I'm gonna start getting the computer running i'll do some i'll do some tutorial or just some walkthrough on the computer here and connecting to it and um making sure everything is up and running all right so now that um it's like all set up and everything i wanted to show you a couple of things you want to make sure that um you do before you do anything else um so first obviously make sure everything's connected uh, make sure there are no possible cable snags 
So anything that looks tight, you want to make sure there is enough room for it to like, to like pull when it, when this thing rotates, because when it pulls, it's going to either break a port, pull a cable out, and it's just, it's just going to go all haywire and nothing will work. So you want to make sure there are no cable snags that are possible. Um, that's the first thing. Another thing is that you want to make sure that the mount is balanced. By mean, by that, I mean like these weights down here, you want to make sure they match the weight of this. So depends on what type of mount you have, you want to make sure that um, it's balanced. So you can do whatever you can, you can lift this weight up higher or lower and make it more of a heavier side. So let me show you really quick. You're going to loosen one of the axes, which is I think the RA, and you're going to want to push it down or whatever. Now that it's loose, you want to make sure you're going to hold, you want to hold it before you loosen it because if it's off balance it's going to flop which one way or another so um, luckily this one is balanced so obviously you'll know when it's balanced is when it doesn't spring back anyway like that so it's balanced um, same weight on each side and you can just kind of push it and it will not move by itself because um, they're both balanced on, on both sides. Um, so that is another big thing because when it's off balance like that, it's, you're going to end up getting tracking problems because it has to push, has to do more work to lift one side up because it's off, obviously. Um, then you want to move it back to home position as close as possible and tighten it. And the other axis, DEC, is balance as well but it's not as important as the other one um, this one it's not gonna be balanced obviously because the wires are pulling down on it and that is why I mentioned earlier I want to mount the computer on top of here so you can um, so I don't have to worry about wire snags all of this is gonna be top heavy and then the weights will counteract it on the bottom but yeah this won't be, it'd be as big of an issue, but, um, so that's that. And the last thing is when you are about to set up your, um, SynScan controller, um, it's not on right now, but it's going to ask for date and time. You want to make sure it's set to the correct time and date and coordinates and elevation as well, because all of that links in with its GPS location and it needs to make sure you're in the right area in order to track the sky properly. Because when you do a go to and select an object on here and go to it, you want to make sure it points in the right place. If it doesn't, you might want to check those settings I just mentioned. Um, the location coordinates, date and time, and elevation. So you want to make sure that is all set up too. Um, yeah, so that is um, some of the three most important steps you want. Um, I'll go over some more later when um, I, it gets darker out, but right now it seems um, it's going to be a couple hours before it gets dark. All right, and one more thing you want to check to make sure you do anything else is that the mount is leveled. So there's on every mount, there's going to be a little bubble level thing right here. It'll show obviously the bubbles in this if the bubbles in the circle it will mean that it's leveled if it's not you want to get it level because when it's not level your tracking will be off as well even if you're aligned with Polaris it will not be the best so you want to get it leveled as much as possible on the ground in order to get it to track properly okay so I'm on my laptop you can see me in the top left hello um, and we're gonna connect. I turn on the Intel NUC, and we're gonna connect to it right now. So we're gonna open up um, Remote Desktop Connection, and I think that is the IP address for it. Let's hopefully it didn't change. Um, so I got new Wi-Fi because I had just having connection issues out here. Um, if not, if it doesn't work, I'll know what the other one. Oh, I think it's. I know what it is. Start. I haven't done this in a while. There we go. All right. So I have no password in it. Um, so I got connected here. So we're on my Intel NUC, and everything is plugged in. The the uh, ASI camera cooling fan is actually running, but 
really no reason to. It's kind of cool out here anyway. Um, oh, got to turn on the mount. As it says, both axes, no response. All right, making sure the controller is connected because the computer needs to see the controller in order to control the mount. So I'm, I'm using, um, in order to power the mount, you need like, it comes with a friggin' car charger plug, which is stupid. So I, uh, what I did is I, um, I connected, I, I bought a 12 volt AC to DC converter and um, basically allows you to plug your car charger into uh, the, it's like a male and female adapter coming together. So basically it converts it over to the power for this. You can plug it directly, directly into the wall. It's not really a, it makes it easier. Um, now, everything seems to be working. So we're going to go ahead and open up. Mm, I use Sequence Generator Pro, so we're going to go ahead and open that up. Takes a little load. Alright, so here is Sequence Generator. So let's go to File, um, New Sequence with Profile. We're going to do LRGB Template. And um, we're going to name this. So name it, we're going to name it M106. Today we're going to be doing it in um, luminance, red, green, and blue. We're not going to be using, and actually probably hydrogen alpha as well, we're not going to be using oxygen and sulfur because today is a full moon, I think, or close to that, and it's not going to work well with that. And the galaxies aren't really um, narrowband, they're more LRGB and a little bit of hydrogen alpha, so we're going to be doing that. Um, just hit OK. And we're going to go ahead and connect the ASI camera. And it should ASI 1600, gain and offset, those are my settings. Um, so just hit OK. And then I think they are... Oh, I just connected it. Oh no, it's connected. Alright, I get confused based on the thing. Alright, so filter wheel. Um, connect. And the focuser, I don't have a focuser, so that we're going to leave that. And then the telescope, we're going to use it as ASCOM, not EQ. We want to use this one. Yeah, so we're going to have a output directory, files. We're going to put it on the sub-download network drive. We'll put it on the light, right? And that's where it's all going to dump to. And we're going to run these. So L, R, G, and B, four of them. Filter, red, oops, let's do luminance first. Luminance, red, green, blue. And I think, based on the filter wheel, L, R, G, B, okay. Yeah, so let's hope that it aligns with those. I hope. And then the suffix is going to be L. R G B. Bad. And then um, write this back. And then exposure. We were. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna start with 60 seconds. So one min. Oops, one not a min. And we'll do a minute each. Um. And then repeat. Um, we, I usually start with one, repeat of one, it's just so I can see the picture, make sure it's in focus and all that stuff. And I, I actually don't really use this for focusing. I use um, this, this software called ASI Cap. It's right here. And basically it connects to your camera directly and gets live video feed from it so you can actually focus in real time instead of taking picture, seeing out of focus, changing it, um, all that stuff. I know I'm talking too fast here. Here, select the see, X. Um, select the ASI 1600. This to be black because I have the lens cap on. And right now, it is doing live video feed. So if I were to go and take the lens cap off the scope, like this, it turns all white. And then put it back on, and it's all black. So obviously, it is working, and there is really no way I can figure out focusing. 
until I start seeing stars in the sky, which is going to be a good couple hours. It's only 3.43, so I get the sun's going to set around. Um, let me check really quick. Sun sets around um, 7.22, so i got to wait a little bit, and then it gets dark probably around like 8, 8.15, 8.30, I don't know. Um, that's that. Let me X out of this. Here. So this is the basic setup I would have. Um, I'm not too sure if it was going to be LRGB. I think you can change. There's like a different profile to set up. So yeah, that is the basic setup right now. And really all I have to do now is do a couple connection tests and wait for it to get dark. And we start polar alignment, which I'm going to go through that. And um, yeah, we'll go from there once it starts getting dark. So I will see you guys um at that around that time around seven eight o'clock all right so what i'm going to do now i just thought of this now is um i'm going to take some my bias and dark images um so i don't have to do them later um so i'm going to go ahead and open up sgp here i, I turn on the setup again um bias and dark images don't need to have the lens cap off you can keep it on um and you just start taking them and you just do it while it I just might as well do it now, but then later, so I don't forget or get lazy or whatever. So, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and just add, add new events. There, so I'll have eight of them, or seven of them, or, or six, sorry. So, bias, doesn't matter what filter it is. Do flats, or let's do bias first. Flats are not part of this right now. Bias, zero second, bias, and then filters, no. Um, we'll do, um, can I make sure you connect these things too? <laughs> Filter, whatever, but anyway, um, we'll do like 200. I'm going to put these, these specifically into bias folder on the network drive. So, yeah, I'll do 200 of those. Check that just to enable it. And we're going to go ahead and run this at zero. So you want, for bias, you want it at zero. Um, it is still exposure. It's just very, very minimal. It's, a sl it's as fast as it can possibly go. So let's just go ahead and hit run sequence. Um, and it should start dumping the images. Yep, it's already taken them. It says downloading. So, yep, there's one. Um, it should be, yeah, it's auto stretch. That's why it's so this is gray. So if I do stretch none, it should be black. Yep, that's what we want. Um, so yeah, that's that. So that's just gonna run. Um, time left remaining doesn't know because it's at zero it has nothing to calculate so it's at four out of 200 so we'll just leave it let it run um, zoom this keeps updating too fast for me see then it shows all the noise and shit that's all the stuff it gets rid of that's what biases do is get rid of all that noise so yep you can see it update every frame all right i'm gonna stop the video here and i'm gonna start doing darks when this is finished Alright, so now I am taking dark frames. Um, I still have the lens cap on, or the cover on. I'm doing 21 minute exposure of dark frames. And I might do, after, we're, after I'm done imaging tonight, maybe tomorrow, I might do, <clears throat> I do, tend to do more images, or, or longer exposure, I'm going to do 5 minute darks. So 300 second dark frames. So uh, I'm just doing 1 minute now, because that's what I'm going to start with. But... We'll see where it goes from here. All right, so um, bias and darks are done. Um, so now all we have to do is wait for um, it to get dark enough, and then we start polar alignment. Polar alignment is not that hard. Well, it can be hard when you don't have an electronic polar scope, but luckily I do, so it shouldn't take that long. And I'll, go, I'll walk you through the whole process and all that stuff. So, 